Hello traders, welcome to another daily analysis. Today is November 7, Monday. Now I hope everyone had a good weekend. And uh, let's just get into our fundamental analysis first. So as mentioned last week, because of the US election, there really weren't any uh, fundamental data that's worthwhile for us to put too much uh, attention on. Now, uh, as mentioned, that the reason is because the market right now is completely sentimentally driven. So in this kind of time, you know, it's really largely depend on what happened in the news. And if you want to trade that for me personally, I don't want to put place any trade during this kind of time. It's because it's such a news driven market that you really have no say of what's going to happen. Now, of course, uh, for those of you who have followed the news, you know that over the weekend, uh, the FBI has uh, cleared out the email investigation on Hillary Clinton. So uh, you remember last week, the market, uh, the equity market, WTI market has all been down for almost consecutively, you know, eight days, nine days. And all of a sudden, we have a huge rally today. And that's a scary thing. But also the interesting thing about trading is that if you have understand the nature of how the market works, the dynamics, then you would not really place any trade last weekend or uh, or even today. It just basically because you don't, unless you want to day trade or you monitor things, but uh, the things is that you really have no say in these kind of situations. I mean, unless you have a relatives who work in the news media that you can have news informations faster than everyone else. Otherwise, for me, I rather stay on the sideline just because I don't have enough information or enough probability to put my bait into the market. So again, Monday is generally slow and today is no exceptional. We don't have any fundamental news, but also it's because of the election. So this thing, of course, is going to continue until tomorrow, which we will have the election result. And then what's going to happen after that in terms of the market reaction um, re really depend. But general perception is that if Hillary Clinton wins, it's going to be very positive for the US dollar. If she loses, then it's going to be very negative for US dollar and vice versa for any other currency uh, that are paired with US dollar. So let's just get into our chart and then we can explain more in terms of what happened. So uh, first thing first, let's take a look. You know, normally we take a look at Euro dollar star, right? But let's take a look at dollar yen. As you see, we have a huge gap. OK, now this is very significant, especially in terms of currency trading. Now, interesting thing is that last week, remember, I had a short pending order at the US dollar. And I closed that out. I canceled my order basically prior before I get filled. It's just because I don't want to hold any trade um, passing the weekend, and just to avoid these kind of situations. Now, of course, you know technically you already can see that the selling power is weakening uh, in the past few days. So although you have a consecutive down day, but you already sort of can tell that the seller has lost the momentum but nevertheless you know prior to this you know prior to this we never we don't know what's going to happen but just by reading the news just by understanding the overall market i already know that because the market is hugely news driven and no one knows what's going to happen over the weekend so it's best for me to get out to not be in any trade and long behold if i were at this short trade i would have been I wouldn't get stop out, but I would have been a nasty drawdown right now. So that's just something to learn. That's that's why you don't really want to just trade with one single aspect. Um, I mean, you, the, the more really the, for me right now nowadays, the more tools you have fundamentally, sentimentally, and technically, it's really gonna do you a very uh, advantageous positions. So. Why is that happen? Of course, because now the market is rally today. WTI also had a green candle today. The equity market is all green. Then, of course, that's going to be very negative for all the safe haven currencies. So you can take a look at dollar Swiss. And uh, it's actually not a, not like not as bearish as Japanese yen. So dollar Swiss was actually OK. 
And uh, let's take a look at Euro dollar then, because Euro is considered to be another safe haven currency. And we have a we have a huge gap down, and then a down day today. So again, um, again, that's just a, a, a tool for you to know that w without understanding any perspective of technical analysis, if you if you just follow the news and understand the personality of currencies to understand how each currency react in different situations. And then you already know that, you know, it's going to be a down day for Euro dollar, basically, because it's update for US dollar. And also the market is really in a risk on sentiment. So let's uh, get to get into our uh, 28 pairs. And then uh, we can talk more about that. Okay. So our first thing is take about euro dollar pair. So euro pound again, we are still in this sideways movement, and really nothing happened in euro or pound right now. It's still in the negotiation steps in terms of the uh, brick exit. So really, don't expect to see too much action in terms of these two currencies. Uh, euro Swiss, on the other hand, you know, right now because the uncertainty element is still in the market, so Swiss franc is still a bullish currency. But again, as I keep mentioning, buying Swiss franc is always scary because there are the government interventions. You never know when SMB is going to intervene. And the last 2014, that huge intervention caused a lot of people and brokerage went bankrupt. So my rule of thumb is really trying to not buy into Swiss franc. If I have a choice, if I need to hedge myself into any safe haven currency, I will always choose Japanese yen or euro dollar. I try not to buy Swiss franc because I don't want to go against with the central bank of Switzerland. Uh, Euro, Euro, uh, Euro dollar, as mentioned, have a gap down and a huge bearish signal. Now, is that a good signal to short? You know, like I say, for me personally, I'm not going to place any trade prior to the U.S. election. Uh, if am, am I going to trade through the election or not? Um, that's a good good point. I'm definitely going to watch the uh, election result, and I might trade through that. Now, how am I gonna do that? It's very simple. I'm just gonna do the exactly same thing I did last time, trading through the uh, break exit events. So remember last time the break exit events, people or all the polls were in favor for Britain to remain. And then that's where you as a trader can make money is when you go against the market, go against the majority view because the market was overbought before the election result even came out. Seems like people are play people were placing bait before they even know if Britain is going to stay or not. And that's where the opportunity opportunity uh, normally comes. Now I have, uh, sh of course, short through the uh, cable and make some just a very, very small amount of profit because I was very conservative. But my my friend and mentor, you know, and I know some of them actually double their account in that day. But of course, they go really uh, heavily leverage on that kind of trade. Uh, the point is, how do you trade through is really the only thing that is countable is the statistic. So remember, at the break exit, what we do is we go on forex live. So you go on Forex Live, which is you know forexlive.com, and then uh, normally Forex Live very interesting is they have statisticians posting the result. So what does that do is that the statistician use mathematic formula to look at the ballot box. So once they calculate, uh, you know, of course I'm not math is not my strongest suit, but you know basically they use mathematics formula live to look at the result of the uh, 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 voting and then give you a mathematic prediction of the outcome. And then that's where people place their trade on. But also uh, the critical element is that the market has already overbought. And that means if you are short in that kind of situation, you have more uh, profit room to go than your risk. So risk reward ratio is very good in that kind of uh, sense. So since today, it's a favorable position for Hillary Clinton, and it has been favorable for Hillary Clinton basically for all this uh, election period. So if the momentum continue until tomorrow, then of course you are looking to short US dollar. That's you know basically you go against the major majority of the crowd. But that's only if you have a certainty from the statistician. 
Otherwise, you know, if you are not sure, then definitely stay out, right? It's very fine, absolutely fine to stay out of this kind of events. A lot of people, when they first start trading, always feel like they're missing out. And this feeling of missing out really turns into a sort of a gambling habit where you have to take every trade, you have to get excited with the uh, sentiment. And that really is the point uh, where you go bust or lose money. So the best way is no action, basically. So for me, especially when I, ha when I have doubt, I, I, I used to learn this from one of my mentors, like when in doubt, get out. Very simple, when in doubt, get out. So tomorrow I will see what happened between now and then, because again, it's such a new driven market. We don't know what's gonna happen between right now, six o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you know, to the elections. Maybe there's a lot of new news coming up, who knows from WikiLeaks or whatever it is, that's already gonna change the sentiment. So, you know, unless you're sure, otherwise you know, just have fun, enjoy the political drama, but don't need to bet your money in these kind of uh, events. Unless you are, you have some certainty. So, Euro Aussie, again, a huge down day, uh, no surprise because we have a risk on sentiment. So now everything, you know, the market, equity market is up, everything goes to the high yield currency again. Again, whether I'm going to short or not, absolutely not, I'm not interested to place any trade at this moment. And Euro CAD, very similar pattern. Euro New Zealand, again, very similar pattern, but you look at the New Zealand dollar has, has has such a smaller uh, selling momentum compared to other pair. And we are really at this critical support. And also November, uh, as mentioned, the New Zealand dollar, the RBNZ going to have their rate decision come out, which most likely is gonna be a cut 0.25%. Euro yen is uh, indecisive because they both are safe having currency. So really, you know, a, a range bound at this point. Pound Swiss, uh, same thing. Now cable, a little bit down day. And uh, again, like I say, you look at the technical chart, you can already tell that selling, the seller has lost momentum uh, last Friday. So, you know, today is just, uh, but really for cable right now, general direction is really going down. It's really a good, good pair to short, but we just have to wait for the US election to clear out the uh, uncertainty for US dollar. Because once Hillary Clinton is elected, if she is elected, then that's going to put US dollar back into the most, the strongest currency in terms of the fundamentals. Then at that time, you know, the uh, everything will resume back. People will start buying dollar and short weak currency. And right now the fundamental weak currency it's still the British pound. Of course, the high court decision last week helped pound a lot, but the uncertainty is still there as a nation for UK. So that's why it is still, you know, people don't like, investors don't like uncertainty. So it's still a good pair to short. Pound Aussie, again, you know, a down day for, an up day for Australia or all the high yield currency, basically. Uh, the, you know, it's very similar pattern if you look at all the pair and, and still, you know, not much selling power, not much buying power into New Zealand dollar, basically. It's because the risk of uh, rate cut is coming up very soon for this month. So Swiss franc and Japanese yen, it's an update for Swiss franc, so you can tell that Japanese yen is really being dumped hugely in this kind of uh, situation. Dollar Swiss, again, uh, a very good uh, reversal signal today. Now, normally I would really like to take this kind of signal as I'm, oh, sorry, uh, my bad. No, normally I would not take this kind of signal because I would not short US dollar against Swiss franc. And, but uh, right now, it doesn't matter what, what signal I have, I would not take anything just because the sentiment of the election. Um, dollar cat have another gap down today. You know, it's just really uh, nothing significant for me to look at this daily chart. And dollar yen, as mentioned, had a gap update, and who knows what's gonna happen? You know, after the election, if the, if Donald Trump gets elected, then you know, uh, pretty much you're going to see a huge down day for dollar yen. Uh, Aussie Swiss again, another update for Australian dollar.
Aussie dollar. Look at that. So you can tell that Australian dollar is the strongest currency among a major currency pair right now. And uh, very good for Australia. Now, of course, the tr China, Chinese have a chi uh, trade balance today coming up. That's going to affect a little bit. Uh, this is a very interesting thing, actually, Aussie Newsy. Because actually, I do. This is actually a good, good signal for me to go long. And the reason is because even though we have election coming up, but as mentioned, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar are both a risk on sentiment. Basically, they are both going to react same same way in terms of the sentiment because they are both high yield currency. So, if all things are equal, I'm definitely more favor into Australian dollar because the fundamentally are more strong. The central banks are not looking to cut rate. At this point, uh, compared to New Zealand dollar, they are actually go looking to cut interest rate further. So if all things are equal, I am actually looking to buy into Aussie Australian dollar. Now the good thing to buy into Aussie New Z is that you you actually hedge out the sentiment. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that doesn't matter who wins the election, it's not going to affect these two currencies too much when they are against each other. So this is actually a good. Pair. And if you're looking at the short-term um, position of these candlesticks, that we are actually really at this, you know, 50% Fibonacci, and there's a very strong support here. There's another support here. It's, it's a whole thing is a support zone basically. So actually, it's not a bad pair to uh, too long. I do like this strong candle. I do like the momentum of the Australian dollar. If tomorrow the election is a win for Hillary Clinton, then this thing is gonna keep going up. If it's a lose, it's a, it's a loss for Hillary Clinton, then we might have a sideway. We we might not necessarily have a down day just because people are going to dump out both Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. And all, all things equal, traders are more bullish toward Australian dollar at this point. So actually, it's, it's a pretty good signal. But of course, I'll do more analysis after I finish this daily analysis and to see if I'm going to take this trade. You can go to my website to see if I'm taking this trade or not. And uh, at the end, again, another gap update for Australian dollar. You can tell a very strong momentum. Okay, Swiss, um, a gap up, but basically an indecisive day. No, nothing really much. As I mentioned, the WTI is still very low right now. So this gap up is purely because the selling power into safe haven currency is not a strength into the oil market. We still have a lot of uncertainty inside the oil market right now. New Zealand Swiss, again, very, uh, very interesting thing just to tell that the New Zealand dollar does not have a very strong strength, even in this kind of risk on sentiment. And that you know further gave me some conviction to short into New Zealand dollar at this point. So basically, that's the analysis. Really very short, as I mentioned, nothing that I'm looking forward to take against any safe haven currency or against you know US dollar. But Aussie New Zealand is perhaps the only pair that I think it's actually you know if you take this one, you actually avoid the risk of the election because they both are going to be non-reactive or they are going to be react in the same way in terms of the reaction. So basically gonna hedge each other. So okay, I'm gonna do more daily analysis. And uh, let's take a look at our uh, this week's calendars. So uh, today, Monday, of course, we don't really have anything coming up. I have a trade balance from China, but it's not really gonna be a big factor at this point. Tomorrow, again, you have a manufacturer production from British Britain, from the UK. Not, it's not going to do too much effect because of the presidential election. So, you know, stay tuned to see exactly who wins the election tomorrow. And, and then we will have a more clear direction. Now, Wednesday, you have a crude oil inventory. Remember the last inventory, we have a really large buildup, which was very negative for the oil market. Now, right now, in general speaking, the oil market is very bearish in terms of the large buildup, the surplus, and also the uncertainty within the OPEC members. So that's all going to be a very negative sentiment into the Canadian dollar. Now, of course, we don't know what's going to happen because we have to see what, who wins the election first. And other than that, you know, the uh, RBNZ rate statement is coming out. So you can actually short into it. If I place a long Aussie New Zealand trade today, I'm basically short into these events. Now, uh, the probability of 
a rate cut is very high. But of course, if they they don't cut the rate, then that's gonna be a reverse strength into a New Zealand dollar. So uh, that's the risk of taking Aussie New Zealand trade at this point. Thursday, you have a regular unemployment claim from US dollar, not really a tradable event. And basically, you have a consumer sentiment at Friday. So really this week, honestly, I don't have any tradable event in terms of intraday trading. In terms of daily trade, it really have to depend on what happens tomorrow. So we have to see again who wins the election and then how are the financial market react to that. Other than that, really, uh, you don't really, you don't, again, you don't have to trade every day or every week. You know, if you're not sure, just sit tight, enjoy, again, enjoying the political drama. Of course, I say that because I'm not an American citizen. I guess if I am Amer American, I probably would be kind of nervous at this point, you know, to see who's going to be the next leader of my country. But then again, right now, uh, you know, let's just see what's going to happen tomorrow. And if you want to trade into the event, again, you can go into Forest Life. I'm not sure if they will have this statistician again for the U.S. election, but basically turn on the news, turn on the TV, looking at the uh, voting uh, result, box by box, states by states, and then uh, looking at all information, then that's where you can trade through the event. But again, if you are not sure, you don't need to risk into this kind of event. You don't need to trade. I have to keep mentioning all the time. As a trader, this is not a job. You don't have to trade every day, every week, or even month. Okay, if there's no trade, don't force it. Okay, guys, uh, if you have any question, feel free to comment below. And uh, otherwise, I'll be back here tomorrow to give you another daily analysis. And stay tuned for the U.S. elections. And uh, wish you have a very good Monday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.